Hey guys, it's Chelsea, and today I have a new video for you. I know how much you guys liked the Uber Eats and the coronavirus pandemic, so I decided to do a part two for you. So today, this is called Food Delivery Funny. I joined Uber, Postmates, and then I had recently joined Grubhub, um, I think towards the end of that other video, and I, as I said, Uber started to watch our account a lot. And then we got a little notification in my account that said, um, there's been fraudulent activity on your account, and if we continue to see it, you are going to be deactivated. And I said, okay, I don't even know what that is, and what they're even referring to. I didn't know, but I was like, I said to my mom, you know there was those couple of incidences, specifically the one with the lady, um, with the sauce, that doesn't look good on our part. And I said, okay, so uh, we need to be really strict. Let's not take any deliveries um, if we're just not available. And um, we just need to do the ones that we can do, and that's that. And um, then we were doing them perfectly fine. Like, we were being very exact, making sure we went right to the restaurant, wait, right to the customer's house. There was no... Um, side places we went to because we've learned from that one experience with that lady that you just don't take it if you have to go do your own personal business and which I understand that's totally um, not how you should do any job I understand that and but the thing was it's like you can't, but what we were doing, or what I was doing, is because I always wanted to make sure my mom knew exactly where she had to go for the customer. After we picked up the food, I was hitting deliver food. While we were sitting in the drive-thru, waiting for the food. Because, as you know, now with the pandemic, the drive through lines are crazy. And it's out of uh, this world, like the ridiculousness that as delivery people were asked to wear masks and um, have the food hot and ready for <coughs> literally can't even go in the restaurant to get the food when it's sitting in the restaurant. It has to be. And so it's getting cold. We're waiting, wasting fuel in the drive through and so I just started to get, I don't know if I started to get irritated by the fact of how this all was like, um, it just felt, it made this job completely difficult. And then the fact that my mom always would stress about where the customer was located. And I just wanted to help her with that and uh, get the address of the customer and have it ready to go so then when we were we had the food and we were ready we just drove off and we headed straight for their house but apparently that was fraudulent and according to uber's terms and conditions that is considered um where you're because according to them as soon as you hit deliver um you're supposed to head straight to their house so they are paying you for, I thought they only paid you for the mileage, but I guess they pay you for other things as well. And so that's why it's just utterly confusing and it just feels like a political power play of a way to get rid of people. But it's, they said that I was doing fraudulent activity because of that. And then that's why I had gotten that other notification a couple weeks ago. And then on the week of June 8th, 9th was our last 
ever day that we did deliveries. Um, because then I got the email that said your account's been deactivated. Then, then I appealed it and said, I don't understand what this is and what I'm what fraudulent activity I committed and then I realized I had been doing that and I said that has to be what it is so then I wrote them and said that and then they said yeah you're not allowed no 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 they never even contacted me directly they I had to contact them and be like so did you guys come up with a decision and then literally a week later on a Wednesday they said Oh yeah, we decided um, it's final, you're deactivated, and I know it's upsetting, but our decision is final. And I was just like, okay. And um, so we got kicked off of Uber. And that's not funny, okay? Because I have not been able to get a full job or even a part-time job since I left that other place. The reason why I can't get a job right now is because of this COVID and like how the world is literally freaking um turned upside down and it's literally spinning on its uh head upside down okay. It's just there's all these things going on racial injustice COVID-19 um and then the freaking election bullshit. I personally didn't feel sad that I lost Uber, but then um, recently I have, now I have just Postmates and Grubhub and it's been deader than dead. And the markets for those are a little bit different than they are for Uber where it's not like, it's not infiltrated this whole area. Postmates it's like, Sometimes I think it's my phone, and other times I think it's my, um, the market, being that, um, people are not ordering through that platform. And then, so Postmates is like a hit or a miss, and then Grubhub is really cool, though, because when you do get a delivery, it's like... They give you all that you need to know about everything. They give you the customer address. They tell you how much your tip was. They um, tell you if you have to order it when you get to the restaurant. They tell you if you um, if you do have to order it. They say, yeah, you can call ahead and just place the order for the customer. But, you know, it depends on the restaurant because some restaurants don't do that. Um, they uh, tell you if it's leaving at the door. They tell you, like, everything you need to know everything that's in the order like there's no question and the thing about that is that Grubhub actually was the last platform to come about in food delivery and I feel like they learned from all the other platforms what wasn't working and they literally built their app to be utter perfection and they literally cater to their drivers because they're always giving free incentives they literally give you two really nice insulated delivery bags and you don't pay for them and they also now with the COVID they have provided th every 30 days you can order uh, protective uh, gear for COVID so masks gloves hand sanitizer and you um, are always you always have them on on hand and that's so important and it just feels like I matter to this platform. Now, the thing about it is that the direct market is literally further away from me, the hot spot of where I have to go. And so then, but it's like, I don't drive and I really don't ever feel like I will ever drive. And I know that's like, you're like, okay, you're just making excuses. No, I, I don't feel like I'll ever drive. There's just something about driving where it's just like, it feels like too much stimulus all at one time. And it literally drives my brain insane. Like, you have to be able to know which pedal your foot needs to be on. You have to steer the wheel. You have to um, do, uh, do the gears. Um, like, turn the 
turn signal. Uh, know um, where you're going at all times. Know which lane you should be in. Um, know exactly what to do at certain intersections and um, in certain in all these different situations. And for me, it's just too much. I don't know. I just don't feel comfortable when I drive. I don't feel like I have to apologize for that. I feel like nowadays there are so many um, other ways to get around that um, eventually when I no longer uh, live with my parents I will just go about using those means and uh, make do how I can. But it's like I don't feel like I want to spend money on a car that's a a piece of depreciating um it depreciates as soon as it comes off the lot and it always needs maintenance there's a chance that you could get into a really bad car wreck and not get anything from insurance um but it's not even that i'm scared to like <coughs> get into a car accident or whatever it's just that i feel like i don't feel safe as a driver driving and like I wouldn't want to put anyone's life at risk being that I don't feel safe if I'm like freaking out while I'm driving and I'm literally just driving down the street I don't feel like that's safe because I make one wrong turn and somebody could get hurt and I just don't it somebody who's my passenger somebody who's um walking uh, as a pedestrian or nearby or even in another car I just don't want to d put anyone at risk and it, being that when you don't feel comfortable doing something to the point where you feel like you could be putting someone in danger don't you think that with this especially now that we've learned through COVID that we ought to be more conscious of other people and how we put we put people at risk we like the way that we connect as human beings like we our life choices affect everyone around us and sometimes they affect the whole world I mean it depends on how high up you are and in, in status but it's like you should realize that you're not when you make a choice you're making it for not just yourself you're making it for other people and when I choose not to drive, I'm putting people in, I'm feeling like I'm making a safe choice, if that makes any sense. So, I just feel like I need to explain that. And I know this isn't a funny part of the video, but you needed to know the whole story and that we lost Uber and that why I don't drive. Okay, so, um, as you know, there's just so many weird things that happen, no matter what job you do, but, um, I had a delivery, I believe it was for Taco Bell, and I delivered it to this house that they had a gate leading up to their, um, porch area, and I had to deliver it, and it was when the restrictions from COVID started to be a little bit more with the quarantine where leave it at the door was something everybody was doing. It was so exciting for me because as I said in the other video, leave it at the door is my safe word. Um, I don't have to interact. But I mean, so I, I'm heading to the door and all of a sudden I hear an animal come up behind me and I'm like, okay, is that a dog? And it was. It was a dog. And I'm like thinking that the dog's going to freaking bite me in the ass. And instead, it literally just smells me and then it just goes back to where it was. It was in a dog house on the lawn on the property there. And But it was so freaking scary because... It could have went uh, many different ways. And I'm just lucky that dogs tend to not be threatened by me. But they're 
it could have still been it could have been a nasty dog and it could have attacked me and I'm lucky that I made it out of there in one piece so yeah I left it at the door and it, the next um, funny that happened was that I was delivering Taco Bell again and it was later at night and or actually, it might not have been Taco Bell. I don't know. It was Taco Bell or Checkers or something. But I literally delivered um, to a neighborhood that had a gated community. Um, that was a gated community. And they wanted, and they gave me the code and everything. And then they said, leave it at the door. I left it at the door. And normally, um, when I did leave it at the door, I wasn't sure if I should ring the doorbell or not because really the person who ordered the food will get a notification that you came with their food. And sometimes they even have you submit a photo showing that you put their food at the door. So I put the food um, at the door and then I rang the doorbell and that was the wrong thing to do that day because this lady came out of the house and she literally chased me to the, not chased me, but literally walked all the way to the end of the porch and said, we didn't order this. I don't know whose this is. And I said, somebody from your house ordered that and I'm just sent to deliver. So, uh, and then I let, we left and the person ended up getting the food because then they also tipped me. So I knew that somebody did get that there but it was really like sketchy like I got yelled at for delivering the food to the person who ordered it and it just goes to show that people in their own home don't even communicate with the people inside their home or the people they live with there was a incident that happened with uber that I am so upset about that it happened that way but what had happened was my sister had to be picked up from work and I don't know why me and my mom decided to take a delivery but we took the delivery and then of course because it was Popeyes they take forever to get your food for you at least they had been at that time even when you were a delivery person they literally would be like oh you have to call the customer and let them know we're out of this we're out of this we're out of this and like normally that would be fine but being that you are about to close in literally less than um 10 minutes it's like you need to just give me whatever you have and they'll just have to you know i can, of course i asked the customer and then she was like oh thank you so much and then she didn't let me know she needed sauce. And then literally after 10 o'clock when they close at 10 o'clock, she literally texted me, um, I need this kind of sauce, blah, blah, blah. I didn't, I had already gotten the food. And then we were heading to get my sister on the way to her place. And um, it ended up taking much longer because my sister literally took forever to come out of her work and then it was a problem because then they can see that I'm literally not anywhere near their location and I'm also not at the restaurant and it caused an issue so there was a flag that was flagged on my account because of that issue now the funny thing was though she was super mad and I swear she was super mad because I didn't get her the sauce and it's like first of all if you want sauce in your order you should put it in with your order like the restaurant gets all the food notes I'm not supposed to get all the food notes so that was the problem really but and people did this to me constantly um for food delivery they do it and it's crazy that people don't realize like you need to give the restaurant your order and let them know what sauces you want because most of the time especially now with the COVID they seal the bag up so if you, you want me to get you sauce it's not going to go in the bag 
And it's also not sanitary for me to be holding your sauce and then handing it to you. Not that I have any, um, I wouldn't be delivering food if I had any symptoms of COVID-19. But it's still not, you know, you have to prevent. Okay, another time I was delivering the food and the people left their front, they had like a small little front gate. They left it locked, so, and then they said leave it at the door. So I couldn't get in there and then I had their big bag of food and I had, and I couldn't like balance it and try to get the gate open. I literally tried for at least two minutes to get the gate unlocked and then I just um, went back to the car and I said to my mom I need to um, put my phone down for a second I can't get this gate unlocked so I'm gonna just have to leave it on like just put it over the gate and hope that they um, I shut the car door and I kid you not my mom literally drives away and I don't have my phone and I only have their food I'm at a stranger's house I don't even know who these people are and it's just like and then I literally started walking because my mom sped away like she literally like was gone and I was just like okay so now I have to walk home and I don't <laughs> Like, I don't have any means of communication, and I don't even have my identification on me. Um, and then, thankfully, uh, God prevailed, and my mom had just realized that I wasn't in the back seat, and she turned around, and she literally came back within... Um, at least it was probably only about three minutes at the most that she have left me I mean I'm 28 years old it's not like I'm I can't be without my mother but I'm just saying like I literally had nothing on me and I was left outside a stranger's house like I was like this is crazy and it really happened there was another time we went into this game community that we never went to and it was so far away okay it was like all the way at least 45 minutes away from where we currently live and I kid you not we went in there and we never um, had been in there so then this lady was standing at the edge of her driveway with her dog and I thought she was the lady who ordered the food um, but I saw that the house number didn't match that the thing and then my mom goes this is her and I'm like I don't think so so I got out of the car I'm like hello she said hello she didn't say um, anything else but then she kind of kept looking at me like what are you freaking doing in front of my house and why are you getting out of your car and like she probably thought I was gonna murder her but um <laughs> and then I'm sure the dog was like are you going to hurt us but, um, even though, obviously, I have a knack with dogs, so it didn't see me as a threat. And, uh, I opened my trunk because it was a pizza order, and I pull out the pizza boxes. And then she's like, oh, I go, did you order Uber Eats? And she's like, oh, no, we didn't order Uber Eats. And she's like, what's the house number you're looking for? And then I said, and then she's like, oh, I think that's down that way. So then we're going down that way, that's not the way, that's not the way it was. It was actually like down a side street, like right near where she was at. And it was, it's just like, so yeah, it was pretty funny, but it was just strange. Like then she literally went back inside her house and I'm pretty sure she was laughing with her family about it, but it was like, um, just strange. Like why was she standing at the end of her curb with her dog? Like, and, and I didn't even see anybody come to our house or anything um, in the time that I had delivered and everything. Like, as we drove by again, nobody was there. So it was really strange. And uh, just, like, typical that 
I, um, you know, weird but funny thing. Then we had to deliver, um, this huge order of food to, um, this new community that had just been built. And it literally, my GPS didn't even recognize it as a community. And it kept saying, turn here. And it literally was, like, you know, on the side of the road as there's, like, trees and, like, just bushes for miles. That's literally what it was saying to turn into. And I was just like, so I messaged the customer. I'm like, um, could you give me directions to your, uh, location? Because my GPS is literally telling me you live in the bushes. And she thought it was hilarious and... Then she also tipped really generously, which was nice, but, and then she gave me step by step so that we could get there and, uh, with the food and everything, and they were super kind people, but it was, and then you guys know from the last video that me and my mom have this thing where we come up with nicknames for people, um, like Mr. Magoo. And, um, my mom is not really good with people's names. And on this person's order, their first name was Levi, but, uh, I don't, it just had his last initial. I don't believe it gave us her, his full name. And then, um, she goes, Oh, we're delivering to Levi Peabody, and it was so funny. But I really hope that this video made you laugh, and I appreciate that you guys watched the other video, and that you enjoy this one as well. Alright, thanks for watching, guys.